If you're new to the D.C. area, you might not recognize the name Victor Page. He was a big deal in Georgetown basketball back in the late 1990s. Now he'll likely spend the next 20 years of his life in prison for attacking a 17 year old girl. This happened last December and it was caught on surveillance video. Page was facing life in prison for sexual assault, but the Prince George's County State's Attorney's Office told us just today he's agreed to a plea deal that would put him behind bars for the next two decades. This won't be his first time in prison. Victor Page was sentenced to 10 years in prison for second degree sexual assault back in 2013. He was released early. I wrote an ebook about Victor Page. It's called All or Nothing, the Victor Page story. His has been a troubled and incredible story almost from the beginning. Victor was going to land in the NBA, make millions of dollars or so most of us thought, or he was gonna end up on the streets strung out in the end, like his mom and dad and so many of his friends. In 2009, against all odds, Victor Page was still confident his basketball skills were still good enough to go pro. Take a look at our interview from back then. Victor Page, number 44, got his start in the backcourt at Georgetown with Allen Iverson. When AI left early to become a number one draft pick, Victor became the number one scorer in the Big East. The former McKinley High School star entered the NBA draft in 1997, but he stumbled from a possible first round pick to not being drafted at all. I don't regret nothing. In an exclusive interview with Nine News Now, Page admits his drinking and carousing got him tossed out of the Chicago Bulls rookie camp. He was later asked to leave the Minnesota Timberwolves camp for fighting. Don't get it twisted and, and say that I really didn't have nobody to, to try to guide me in the right path. I just wanted to do it my way. I, I thought going out there hanging around guys on the corner, drinking liquor and, 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 and running from the police was the way to go. Page was demoted to the CBA League where he became a scoring machine, but he managed to lose that job as well and barely escaped jail. By now you've noticed the patch where his right eye used to be. Friends say that your friends really ain't your friends. Just out the streets because the street ain't going to get you number trouble. Victor Page was shot in 2003 back in his old neighborhood of Berry Farms. To this day, I just don't know why he did it. Berry Farms is where his father died of a drug overdose and his mother from AIDS before he was rescued by John Thompson and given a scholarship to play for Georgetown University. He's been like a, a father figure to me. Victor Page is convinced he still has a shot at the NBA, even though he turned 33 in February. Well, my career ain't over with. It's just going to be harder to come back. No, it's not going to be harder. It's just like, like, it's like a baby. You got to crawl now. I got to crawl before I can walk again, that's all. So Victor Page is now 43. So Mar uh, Mike Wise, columnist, opinion writer on sports and just about anything else he wants to write about. He's very good. <laughs> Chick Hernandez, everybody knows this face. He's former sports anchor here in town. Chick, I'm going to start with you because you're the guest here. Okay. Victor Page, what do you think? Uh, a guy who just couldn't survive his, his, his upbringing, his surrounding. Uh, we've seen him many, many times with the kids in this area. And you come from Southeast D.C. Uh, you're talking about a guy who had the world right here. Uh, but he, as, as you just heard in his own piece, that he sabotaged himself. He's a guy who four of his teammates at Georgetown went on to the NBA. He thought he was going to be there. And what does he do at that camp, that Chicago uh, pre-draft camp? Sabotages himself, stays out late, misses the morning workouts, End of story as far as the NBA goes. Yeah, Mike? I don't know if it's a story about the playground legend that went bad because this is a guy who was more than a playground legend. He, he, he had a tryout with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He went to training camp with him. He's still, I think, the leading scorer for the CO, Sioux Falls Sky Force. And so th this is a guy who was, had gifts beyond ba gifts that he needed to find beyond basketball, and he never did. And it's not that I don't think we shouldn't make a big deal about it because he was a known name. I also think we need to remember that this was a guy convicted of sexual assault. This was a guy reportedly who had had to be pulled off the teenage daughter of his girlfriend. And that to me, it, it almost disqualifies you from real sympathy. Mm -hmm. It just does, in I, my book. I had totally forgotten that he mentions John Thompson, who was like a father to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you kidding me? What? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the role that John Thompson played. He played it with, with Alonzo Mourning. I mean, what, what other guy in the world calls in the leading mm -hmm. drug kingpin in Rayful Edmonds and said, look, stay away from my boy. And that's what he did for these guys. He tried to help Victor Page out. 
Victor Page didn't try to help Victor Page out. Yeah, and I think it's a point. Mm -hmm. the, the things that John Thompson made available to all his other players. Allen Iverson was the first one not to go four years and get his degree from Georgetown. Yeah. He changed the whole game. But the things John Thompson made available to all his players, he made available to Victor Page. You know, you can sit here and talk about his background, where it comes from, uh, but he also had opportunities that no a question. lot of kids coming from those communities he, don't get. Big knock on Big John was that he all he took too much time with his his successful players, the Dikembe's, the Patricks. I don't know if I buy all that, but I think um, another guy, Michael Graham, who Victor Page, you said he was, he may have been living with for a while and who probably tried to mentor him as well. Michael Graham did a lot to turn his own life around. Sure. And he's got a radio show now and uh, shoot, uh, you know, you talk to him and you go, well, this is not just a successful former basketball player. He's a successful person. And Victor Page could have been that guy. And it's too bad. It really is too bad. And again, it allows us to go back to anybody who gets the chance to go to Georgetown and get that Georgetown education. You got a shot that most, most people can True. only envy. Yeah. And your basketball got you there in a lot of instances. He was in a back. He was in a think about this. He was in a backcourt with Allen Iverson, who ended up being the number one draft pick the year. The year after that, Victor Page led the Big East in scoring. I mean, you you couldn't make up everything. He about had it this all guy. right there for him, and he, and, he, and he literally blanked it away. Okay. You know, and it actually started before he got to Georgetown. After he graduated from McKinley, where he averaged 27 points a game, okay, Washington Post Player of the Year, they sent him away to prep school in New England, you know, mm -hmm. for a couple of years to get him ready to go I to Georgetown. I forgot that. Yeah, you know, my, my point being that the, the guy was breaking the rules, if not the law, going to pick him up at Oxon Hill, where his yeah. grandmother moved him, right. bringing him into D.C. to play ball. That guy saw to it, along with John's help, that he went to school in New England. They wrapped all the services and support sure. they could around this yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. that's like just it. sad. Sad story. Okay. And sad, and I, I really do think we need to pay uh, homage to the victims. Right. Because no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely know, right. I think it's more important than anything. Mike, Chick, thanks a lot. Really absolutely. appreciate it. Thanks for seeing us. Okay, man. You too.